what is the potential consequences if, for example, a business doesn't have up-to-date evacuation signs or if they don't have signs at all? Uh, what 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 are they potentially looking at if 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 there was a if there was an incident, a, a regulator comes through and they find that the business never put any effort into having updated signs or, or signs at all. What would what would be the potential uh, repercussion there? Like what would be the potential? Well, my consequence? my experience because I have dealt with death and serious injury in the workplace is that the regulator's got a job to get to. They they they've got to see. Um, you know, had the company done everything that's reasonably practical to to do the right thing, um, and uh, their their only um, recourse uh, is uh, penalties um, in the case where the event has happened. So they will go through the legislation. They'll find the various penalties, and and um, along with notices, so things like enforceable undertakings and stuff. Um, the organisation will be uh, open to um, um, to that, uh, you know, could be several penalties. And one of them, say, for instance, it was a fire. Um, now, because of the fire, um, you know, smoke generated and someone was overcome by the smoke and died. Um, when they investigated, so you've got two uh, investigations going on then. You've got the, uh, uh, the, the fire brigade's investigative um, body um, plus, it's a workplace incident, so especially well, it's, it needs to be a worker that's passed away, and so they'll jump into it. So they'll be going for uh, you know uh, everywhere that there's a, um, a non-compliance, you know. So uh, it could be a significant, um, you know, would be a very significant fine, um, and uh, and uh, and uh, and I'm ninety-five percent sure uh, that the I'm pretty well sure now that all states apart from Victoria have uh, industrial manslaughter. I know here in Queensland we do. So if it could be proven that you had done nothing, you know, you didn't even have an extinguisher in the place, so no written plan, no no evac sign, um, you know, zero in there, um, and even, even worse if it was a complex evacuation um, and someone died, you, know, you could go to jail. The, the officer of the PCBU could go to jail um, under industrial manslaughter. So, so it, the responsibility falls under the person that is in charge of safety for that business, or or the business no, owner. No, or, no, or, it, it, it's it's what they refer to as the officer of the PCBU, and the officer is right. someone that can significantly change the direction, both financially or in what you do, the service or production uh, of, of the company. So they're, they're the person in the firing line. There might be several officers of a company. Um, where it gets complex, uh, even for me, and that's why, um, even though I did look after one multi-storey building at one stage, I've, I, I haven't actively chased it and I avoid it, is um, you can imagine the, the legal requirement um, of uh, uh, the PCBU. Now, I did make the mistake, I think. Let me check myself and correct myself. Uh, in the uh, in this video, very quickly, is um, the previous podcast. I, you mean, yeah, or? the previous pod, okay. podcast. Yeah. Now, now I said uh, for those that will pick it up, I'm sure there will be person conducting a business or a uh, uh, no, person in control of a business or undertaking. My bad. Is I uh, for some reason that's like a earworm that stays in my head. Uh, it's uh, the. the the person in control of a business or undertaking. For those that picked it up, good on you. Um, but yeah, is they're, they're, it control or conduct, Bruce. Yeah, it's uh, uh, a um, it's a person conducting a business or undertaking. So um, that's that's the entity. Okay. okay so prior to two thousand and eleven, or the model coming in, it was the employer. Okay, so the employer is the uh, logo, basically, uh, Safety Hub or whoever. Um, and they couldn't send the, the employer, the logo, the company, the jail. Um, you know, so they came up with um, making someone responsible. They still refer to it as a, a person conducting a business or undertaking. But a business, a, a, a company, is looked on as a person in corporate law. Um, 
the only time it is a physical person is when it's a trading air, so Bruce Irvine trading ads, whatever. Um, so the person in the firing line is the officer of the PCBU. So prior to that, there was no one, pretty well, uh, and now there's an actual person referred to in law uh, that is in the firing line. So that, that can, uh, so it's called the officer of the PCBU. I've heard it even by the regulator, uh, the the the, um, uh, the person that owns the business referred to as the PCBU, but it's not. It's the officer of the PCBU. Then everybody underneath that, which never used to be the case, are workers. So if you were a school experience person coming on, you're never taken into consideration. A volunteer wasn't, all that. But now they all are. They're all workers. Anybody that carries out work. Like everywhere is a worker. volunteers. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The worker. That's right, yeah. Okay. So um, if you're working, say, for instance, you've got a, a, a company and you've made a deal with your worker to drive their car, okay? So their car's now a workplace, so you've got to make sure they maintain their car and things like that. Uh, that's why it's better to have a company car. But if you have them using their own, uh, you've got to make sure that it's maintained it's and, that, and that it's safe to start off with and that it's, um, it's registered, you know? So... Uh, it, 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 get, it, it compounds out, you know, when you're, when you're trying to run your little business. I see. So we, we, we uh, you know, those sorts of things would be uh, put in as a, as a hazard straight away to us and an action uh, put in. So they're, they're, they're maybe not perfect to start off as we onboard, um, uh, but over time, uh, you know, we can see these things that need to be done and actioned. And so... As long as uh, the, um, even if there is an incident, and touch wood there never is, is that um, the regulator is looking at what have you done, you know, and is that is that everything that's reasonably practical, given your knowledge and skills? Um, and that's what they're assessing. You know, you don't want someone to die because you get, they're driving your company car. Um, don't want someone to die at all, but if they were seriously injured or killed driving your company car, um, they would go, is it registered, is it maintained, have they got good tyres on, is the person uh, skilled enough to drive that car, are, are they licensed and so on and so forth. But if it's their own car that they're doing, but uh, we're just starting this business, we don't have lots of money, I'll pay you fuel for you, and even if I pay you maintenance, um, you know, but is it a safe car? You know, it's a 20-year-old, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, a car that sounds a bit dodgy, but you know, um, only just driving around uh, locally in the suburb, uh, we should be fine. Now, I, I know of quite a few businesses that I see uh, have got staff using their own cars. And um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong out there, but it's a workplace. Um, and so they're the concerns. That, now, uh, should we just stop using the car? Yeah, well, not necessarily. We, we can gather that information. We can uh, send it off to a mechanic and just get it checked and get a receipt that it has, um, you know, and uh, and you keep a copy of the uh, driver's license and all all that the the um, uh, the uh, maintenance record and the uh, driver's license and everything can be held in in work hub and will expire and tell us when it expires and um, you know so uh, so we we can you know uh, manage that risk. Thank you for watching. This short video is part of a longer podcast that can be found on the Safety Out YouTube channel, as well as Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you found this information helpful, then please like, share, and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Also, if you have any Australian and New Zealand workplace and fire safety related questions that you'd like Bruce to answer on the podcast, then feel free to leave a comment below and we'll answer it in the next week's podcast. For more in-depth information and inquiries, you can also schedule a free call with Bruce directly by visiting safetyhut.com.au.